you know, a lot of people um, ask me in some of these interviews, they say like, when does, when does aging start? And of course, aging starts the, as soon as you're born. But, um, you know, when do we become, when does sarcopenia start? And, and I often, I found this maybe, you know, it's trite to say, but, you know, as I get older, uh, research becomes me search, right? I'm, I'm interested in what, what it means for me. Um, but I, I find myself correcting my grad students and, and, and students a lot and say, they say, sarcopenia begins in your fifth. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. Sarcopenia probably begins for some people in their fourth decade. So in, in your 30s, um, for people who are younger and begin to do a lot less then that's a contributing factor to sarcopenia. Uh, you know, we're, we're not really sure where uh, age-related loss of muscle mass begins, but I'm, I'm almost certain now that it begins for some people in their 30s, um, probably uh, for a lot more people in their 40s, but you can begin to measure it when people are in their 50s. So, you know, when do you begin to develop that vision of your future you and, and how you're going to age and what you're going to look like? I, I don't know. But, uh, you know, so that's the cautionary note to, to younger people. So I, I don't necessarily think you have to be, you know, massively muscle bound to, to enjoy the advantages, but definitely maintaining your physical activity level for as long as you can to uh, maintain the activity of that sink and to at least uh, maybe flatten the curve a little bit. So instead of this steep downward decline in muscle mass, you, you, you change the slope. Uh, I mean, aging is going to get you. Like it, it does everybody. It, it, it happens. So even the most muscle bound and the fittest and most active, so the master athletes, for example, they age, they get older and, you know, there's very little you can do. Um, but you're trying to maximize your chances. So I think that that's really, you know, when you, took, you take a look at the two stimuli to maintain muscle, uh, it's protein and protein feeding um, and, and activity. And so we talk about the intersection of those all the time. Right. That was a great answer. Um, and that was actually one of my questions was, is sarcopenia kind of inevitable? Like is muscle loss inevitable? Because I think I read in one of your papers that um, about 80% of the people or yeah, 80% of the people over 80 years old or something like that are sarcopenic. So what about that other 20%? Like what are the, what's the degree here? Yeah, so I, I, you know, uh, I, I was having a, a, a discussion, a, a thread on Twitter uh, with, a, with a colleague the other day. Uh, I mean, I think the hard part uh, with sarcopenia and sarcopenia research right now is exactly what is sarcopenia. So if you go back to the historic, you know, when the, ter the term was first used, and it was Erwin Rosenberg at Tufts who coined it, you know, sort of poverty of flesh from the Greek word sarcopenia. Um, and then Baumgartner sort of uh, gave us the first nuclear definition and said, you know what, if your skeletal muscle or lean mass based on whatever method you use is two standard deviations, then you're sarcopenic. And now we have begun to incorporate functional outcomes into that definition as well. So it, it sort of depends on what definition you use. But as you point out, uh, I think I mean, everybody ages. You, you can't, you, we've not been able to find anything that cheats aging yet, uh, besides caloric restriction and a few other sort of, I, th I call those minor sort of tweaks or whatever, <laughs> because I, I don't, th I think they work great in the lab. I, I think outside of the lab, um, I, I, I reserve my opinion. So uh, the main point I would make is that, you know, aging is going to happen. And what we're trying to emphasize in this uh, discussion is really about how you can maximize the chances that you have. And in that sense, then you mentioned health span. Uh, I'm interested in living long, yes, uh, but I'm also also interested in living independently and you know hopefully free from chronic disease. And so I I, I can't think of uh, anything from a lifestyle standpoint that really tops you know good nutrition, eating well, however you define that, but definitely physical activity has to be part of it. 